my name is Mark Long, and I'm going to be talking about vitrification today. Uh, the title of my talk is The ART, or The Art of Vitrification, Closing the Open System. What I mean by that is um, how we can have a closed system, a safety of a closed system, but with the efficacy um, of an open uh, vitrification device. So why do we need a closed system? Um, there's actually potential concerns with contamination during cryobanking. Um, this has been known for a while uh, through problems with dermatology and cryotherapy, um, through the d disease transmission following transplantation, and also microbial contamination of liquid nitrogen. We all know just exactly how dirty those liquid nitrogen tanks can be when we've emptied them, and also the demonstration that embryos can actually be contaminated from viruses when they've been spiked into the liquid nitrogen. And of course, there's now uh, regular, regulatory requirements for cryobanking, which um, IVF will be affected by. So there are ways that we can minimize the risk of contamination during cryobanking. One of them is obviously to screen on our patients and then quarantine those uh, materials. We can perform regular decontamination of the cryotanks. And of course, we can wash those gametes and embryos. So most of the contaminants will stick to the zona pellucida, so we can actually wash away a lot of those. But the problem is that many of the techniques nowadays, uh, ICSI and biopsy of the embryos, are causing a breach in the zona, which can then allow the contaminants to um, contaminate the actual embryo itself. We can sterilize liquid nitrogen with uh, filtration and UV sterilization. But of course, we don't work in a sterile environment, and uh, we can't maintain that sterility. So probably the easiest way is to prevent complete contact with liquid nitrogen, both during vitrification and subsequent storage. So I want to talk to, to you about the development of our closed vitrification device called the Rapid Eye. It was started in 2010, and the goal was to uh, develop a device which was easy to use and had results which were equivalent to open systems. Uh, so we decided to try and build upon the open system, which was the feature loop or the cryo loop. It has several advantages. It has a very thin or a minimal volume of vitrification media, and you know exactly where you're placing your oocytes and embryos. So in a proof of principle paper, what we want to look at is could we develop that technique and make it into a non-contact device. So in this paper, we actually um, used the cryo vials but rather than having liquid nitrogen inside the cryovial, we had a box full of liquid nitrogen, so the liquid nitrogen was around the cryovial, essentially supercooling the air inside the cryovial to the temperatures of liquid nitrogen. What we found in this method, at least with mass embryos, is that we could have equivalent embryo development with both of these techniques. So this demonstrates that you can actually use supercooled air rather than direct contact with liquid nitrogen for the cryopreservation or vitrification of mass embryos. But one of the issues with cryovials is you can't maintain their seal under liquid nitrogen. So we decided to go for an in-straw uh, technique. So this is the actual device itself. So we have a straw and then the actual vitrification device that you can see here. So this is where you're going to place your embryos. So it has a small hole. The volume of that hole is 50, so 50 nanoliters. So a very small volume, which means the cooling and warming rates are going to be quick. And inside that hole, you're going to prepare your oocytes or embryos. So much like the cryovial, you then have a straw inside the box, surrounded by liquid nitrogen. So you're cooling the air inside of that straw, and then you place the device inside the straw for instantaneous vitrification. And of course, the cooling rates are going to be lower than anything that, where you're using direct contact with liquid nitrogen. So one of the first things that we wanted to check is, can you have um, a closed system such as the rapid eye, with a rate that's uh, a cooling rate that's quick enough to cause vitrification. So you can see here in this panel here on the left, where we're using just the base medium. This is no cryo protected. You can see it's gone black or gone opaque. So this is a, a frozen sample. But you can see quite clearly on the right with the vitrification medium that you have a, that glass-like state where the sample has been vitrified. So we assume that the water within the embryo itself has been vitrified. So we know that we have fast enough cooling rates with the rapid eye for vitrification. This is confirmed by this paper here, which is actually a paradigm shift, which demonstrated that it's indeed the warming rate that's more critical than the cooling rate. So as long as, as, long as you have a fast warming rate 
uh, you, the chance of success is much higher. You don't need very, very fast cooling rates, uh, which is created by direct contact with the conduction. We could actually argue that the rapid eye is probably the most tested closed device. Uh, in this particular study here, we used mass embryos, both pronuclear oocytes and eight cell embryos. We vitrified and warmed them alongside some controls, which were non-vitrified, and looked at embryo development both on day four and day five. We then took those blastocysts and cell stained them to look at the number of cells in each of those blastocysts. And then we also performed embryo transfers. And in each one of these parameters, we could show that the rapid eye could support both embryo development and embryo viability as compared to control or non-vitrified embryos. So now to some clinical data. In this paper by Hashimoto, they've uh, actually took some frozen 2PN oocytes and then vitrified them, either with the rapid eye or the open cyst in the cryotop. And you can see here quite clearly that the survival rates and the blast the, um, generation rates are equivalent between both the rapid eye and an open system. They also stained each blastocyst as, as we did with the mouse to look at how many cell numbers are in each blastocyst. And you can see that there's no difference between the two. We also looked at um, blastocysts in this study. So they compared again the rapid eye with the cryotop. You can see here clearly that there's no difference in survival rate or ongoing pregnancy rate, whether you use the closed system the rapid eye or the open system the cryotop. There's actually a presentation here by Nina Desai, which was recently published. It's actually going to be presented here in, um, at ESHRA on Wednesday. It's oral presentation, 275. Here they're comparing vitrification of day three human embryos using either the rapid eye or the cryoloop, which is their open system of choice for many years. And you can see here, again, the same trend. Um, no difference in survival rates and no difference in clinical pregnancy rates whether you use a rapid eye or an open system. They too have looked at human blastocysts using the cryoloop and the rapid eye with survival rates equivalent between the rapid eye and the cryoloop. So again, more data supporting that you don't necessarily need direct contact with liquid nitrogen for human embryo cryopreservation. One of the criticisms of a closed system, or one of the concerns, is that the cooling rates weren't probably going to be high enough for the vitrification of human oocytes. We have a clinical trial that's uh, still ongoing, but I just want to show you some of the more recent data. So this is a courtesy of a clinic in Brno in the Czech Republic. And this is using the rapid eye to vitrify hum fresh human oocytes. So at the moment we have 51 patients. There's uh, almost 600 oocytes have been vitrified and warm with a survival rate of 94%. You can see here very good um, both biochemical and implantation rates with an ongoing pregnancy rate of 49%. We now have, I think, somewhere around seven live births using the rapid eye for fresh human oocyte vitrification. So just to summarize your take home message, hopefully I've shown you some data which demonstrates that the rapid eye form performs equally as well as open systems such as the cryoloop and cryotop for all stages of human uh, oocytes and embryos. Um, and that the rapid eye provides um, the efficacy of an open system but with the safety of a closed device. Thank you for your attention.